Hey team, Dave Benfell here, Rod and Rifle Magazine. And today we are looking at the Nikon Pro Staff 5 spotting scope. The spotting scope we have here uh, has two detachable eyepieces uh, of differing magnification. The eyepiece that we used was the 20 to 60 power. Just a couple of features uh, on, the, on the spotting scope itself. Firstly, you have a, a shade or a, a glare hider that extends out in front of the scope. And that's obviously to stop the damaging effects of uh, bright sun like getting into the lens and whiting out what you're trying to see. It's quite a nice feature. It's inbuilt. It's not an attachment. It just slides out from the uh, end of the scope. That brings me on to another point about spotting scopes. A lot of people will spend quite a lot of money on a spotting scope, but what the advice I'd give you is, yes, it's great to spend a lot of money on those spotting scopes if you can and buy the best spotting scope you can. However, environmental factors do affect how far you're going to see, especially if you're trying to see at long range. Okay, if it's really, really hot or misty, um, okay, the heat's going to cause that that heat glare, that heat shimmer, and it's really going to detract about how quality, um, the quality of the picture that you're seeing. And there's nothing you can do about that in particular. However, there's another side to that. When you have the, the spotting scope set up as it is now on a tripod, your tripod is another factor that really does affect how far out you can see and the quality of the picture you're looking at. If you spend a lot of money on a spotting scope, but you don't spend money getting a good tripod, all you're doing is hamstringing its ability to see at distance. The main reason is the effects of the wind. Okay, If there's a strong wind blowing, any kind of, any kind of shaking, and as soon as you are either touching it or trying to look through it, it's going to be moving. And the further you zoom it out, the worse that effect is going to be. It kind of negates the effect of why you actually want to buy a spotting scope. So as a hunter, why would you want a spotting scope in the first place? Really, it's a natural progression for a hunter that is looking to secure that trophy animal. Uh, it's more useful in areas down in the South Island where the terrain and the ground is much larger. The catchments are bigger, uh, the mountain ranges are longer and higher. So if you imagine yourself on one side of the valley, and you want to see what's on the other side of the valley. Sure, you could walk all, across, all the way across there, but sometimes that's going to involve a, a tricky river crossing and it can take a lot of time to cover that ground. Smarter, not harder is the term, and that's where a spotting scope comes into it. You can see a much further distance. You can assess the quality of any animals that you see, and when you do see that trophy animal, you can really plan and put in a good stalk on it. It's just not possible to do that sort of thing with a pair of binoculars. You can see a lot of animals with binoculars, but once that distance goes on, you might see half a dozen animals that might be trophy animals, or they might not. So it really is an effective use of your time being able to see uh, the animals in the area and assess their quality. When you're looking at purchasing, purchasing a spotting scope like the Nikon Pro Star 5, what you're really looking for is the quality of the glass and the ability to, um, to fine tune it and focus it, particularly at long distances. Okay, That's what really separates um, spotting scopes and all optics, really. So how does the Nikon Pro Star 5 hold up? Okay, The glass is very good for the price. Uh, it's very adjustable. I like the features of the, uh, the sunshade. Uh, that comes out. It's the detachable eyepieces are another nice touch as well. As I said before, you've got the lower magnification eyepiece and you can fit it out with the higher magnification one, which we have here, which is the 20 to 60 power. The way the scope is also designed is to make best use of digiscoping. For those of you that aren't familiar with digiscoping, that is where you use uh, a camera or some kind of recording device uh, in conjunction with some kind of optics. Uh, and so then you can take photos or video record through to get that extra magnification and distance. So some of you may be familiar with the Coolpix line of cameras. Obviously the spotting scope, uh, the bracket that, that uh, you buy separately is designed to attach to a Coolpix camera. 
If you want the extended zoom line, you're looking more the P900, which I know a lot of you use. But I would say for the majority of hunters out there, you're more looking around the A900 level, okay? That gives you a nice, really compact, lightweight camera. It gives you a little bit of zoom there to use if you need it, but it's gonna do most of what you want to do. Okay, if you had something like the A900 and then you coupled it with some optics with, a, with some sort of digiscoping bracket, then I think you're really onto a winner. So for the price, great glass, some good features, and uh, definitely a good buy when used in conjunction with the camera mount that is used with the Coolpix camera series.